want to play with robots? Well, it's actually quick and easy, it's convenient, you can play whenever you want for as long as you want, and it's fun. But uh, best of all, the robots don't ever blame you for your mistakes, but if you want, you can still blame them. G'day, I'm Pete, and today I want to talk about a few tips and tricks to playing with the robots. So what we're going to cover today is I want to cover how they actually work, what sort of thinking goes on behind the scenes, uh, understanding the descriptions that they also make. So when you're looking at the bidding, the descriptions can be a bit daunting if you don't know what to look for, so I'll cover a few tips on that. We'll look at the leads and signals and bidding uh, decisions that they actually make, how to go about approaching those, what you need to know before you jump straight in. And then fourth, capitalizing on the mistakes. When you're playing with a robot, you wanna try and minimize the mistakes they make, but you're also playing against robots, so how can you maximize the mistakes that the opponent's robots are actually gonna make? So we'll cover those four things today, and let's jump into how they actually work. Well, uh, they actually run off what's called double dummy simulations, uh, where they imagine seeing all four hands and then run a few different simulations of what all four hands might look on based on the leads and the bidding so far and the cards they've actually seen. And then they try and work out what the best card to play from there actually is. Uh, so it's important to understand that. So when we touch back on mistakes of how they actually approach, um, you understand why they make the mistakes they do or why they get the things right that they actually do. Anyway, uh, let's jump into uh, understanding a few different descriptions of what they actually have. So when you're bidding, you might see a description pop up like this or like this. Um, so let's just break down what you should actually be looking for in these descriptions. So the first thing that you might notice is in the top one, it says 11 to 16 high card points and 12 to 18 total points. Lots of the times there'll be two descriptions of the points there. Uh, if you ever see the just total points, it means they're taking into shortage and uh, distributional points as well. And it's not just their, to like it is their total points, not just their high card points. So in that first one, there's a description of the high card points you can expect, 11 to 16 high card points but they might have a bit more extra distribution. So that's what you can look for if you, there's ever those two descriptions there. If you sometimes only see one where it says total points, understand that they are taking into account distributional factors there. And the second one, uh, it's just sort of got all the different suits and what to actually look for. So the second one says there's between three and five clubs, between three and five diamonds, between three and four hearts and two or less spades. The really key point there is that little minus symbol after the two. So this one's actually trying to describe a takeout double. The key thing here is that minus sign. Sometimes you're not sure if your double is takeout or penalties. Look for the description of the suit. Sometimes it'll say two plus, in which case you're making a, a penalty double. Sometimes it'll say two minus. Look for if it's a minus or a plus. That'll be a good hint to whether it's a takeout double or sort of penalty interest uh, double. So look for those minus signs and those plus signs. There are a couple of things to look for in understanding uh, how the robot's bidding actually works. Here's another one. Uh, another term that comes up a fair bit is the term biddable or rebiddable. What's that actually show? So rebiddable term tends to suggest that you can bid and bid it again. I usually translate this into, I expect six of the suit or more. Uh, although if they've just bid it once, it can occasionally be five. Uh, so this is a bit of a loose term, but rebiddable usually means six. It can cause a bit of confusion there, but I just wanted to highlight these sorts of terms that can come up and what you should be actually expecting from them. So in general, with the descriptions, if there is like a conventional name, it'll usually pop up at the top. It'll then give you a bit of suit descriptions, look for the plus and minus signs. And then finally, uh, it'll give you high card points and total points or just one of them. Uh, here it's saying there's 11 or fewer high card points. Notice here, there's just the minus sign. And then with total points, it's giving you 11 to 12 total points. So it's taking into account shortages and what to actually expect from that. So that's how the descriptions actually work. We'll jump into uh, BBO and actually have a look at some of them. So how it actually plays out when you're in BBO, uh, you can actually just cursor over the different uh, choices and it'll give you a description pop up there about what to actually expect. 
So here it's got the eight to 17 high card points, but the nine to 19 total points. Now, obviously I'm not gonna bid one heart on this hand. I just wanted to highlight how the descriptions actually pop up. Now, this is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's really useful to be able to look up the different bidding meanings and see what you should do. Uh, but I see some people always feel like, oh, I have to find it, uh, like it has to match perfectly. Don't worry about that. You can fudge the, the choices a little. Use this as an approximate guide. The main thing you wanna be aware of is that it's not a drastically different description. Because if the description is way off, the robot will do something very strange. Whereas if it's okay, use your judgment. You don't need to follow this strict rule set. Just understand approximately what the robots are gonna do. And the other key thing is the robots also fudge it as well. There are certain times that the robots will uh, show a description and it doesn't quite match. This is just an approximate description of what you should be expecting. Don't think of it as I have to follow this rule set. You trust your instincts, bid what you wanna bid, but you have this ability to look it up and choose what you wanna do. So here we'll bid two diamonds, Michaels, and here the robots can uh, jump in and bid, and we can look at what the descriptions are. It's just highlighting the last one here, three clubs, and uh, we can cursor over another bid to see what it says. So here, two spades is a bit unusual. It's got constructive fourth suit. So here I've shown both majors, so they're not actually trying to uh, show spades here. And you can see that it's got five plus clubs, 10 or more total points. So again, it's really useful that you can just look up the uh, descriptions of the bids whenever you want. When making your choice, you can do it, but don't feel like it's a rule set that you have to follow. Trust your instincts, you can bend the rules a bit. The robots do as well. So use it as a guide, but don't feel like you strictly have to do that. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is what sort of bidding system the robots actually use. They play two over one, which if you've never played it before is a lot like standard. The only difference is that when you open one of a major or your partner opens one of a major and as responder you bid at the two level, that's now game forcing uh, rather than 10 or more points if you're playing standard. And what do you do if you're in that intermediate range playing two over one? You just keep the bidding at the one level if it's in a new suit. So one no trump isn't six to nine. It's a bit of a wider range if you haven't played. If you've never played two over one, it is quite similar to standard, so don't worry about that. Give it, give it a shot. You can always look up the descriptions, which is quite useful. The other couple of things that I wanted to highlight in the robot's bidding, which is it's important to understand how you actually support partner. So I'll bring up a new deal. Uh, so when supporting the robot with a major, the raise structure that they actually play, uh, if you play two hearts, it's just a normal raise, sort of six to nine-ish points. If you jump to three hearts, this is a four card invitational raise, 10 to 12 total points. Uh, if you've only got a three card invitational raise, this is a bit tricky to find, so that's why I wanted to highlight that. What the robots actually do is they start by bidding one no trump, which in two over one is forcing for a round, and then they follow it up by jumping to three of a major. So they'll bid one no trump, and then they'll follow it up with three major in this case. If we had a stronger hand with four card support, uh, we can bid two no trump, which is Jacoby. Whereas if you've got three card support and a game forcing, you start with a new suit, typically a two over one bid if you can, and then support hearts later. So I wanted to highlight them because if you've got the three card support, it can be a bit tricky to actually find. So I just wanted to show that. And one other bid that sometimes people miss and can cause confusion if you've never played it before is a convention called Drury, which the robots do play, which if you're a past hand, where if it goes pass, pass, and say we opened a heart in third position, then a two club bid is actually a raise. So uh, Drury works by, if you are a past hand, your partner opens in third position or fourth position, if you bid two clubs, that's actually a raise. I've seen people not look at the description of this and get really confused of why two clubs is a raise in some situations and not a raise in others. Uh, just understand that the robots do play Drury, which means that if your partner opens a major in third position or fourth position 
and you bid two clubs as a passed hand, this may be a raise. So if you ever spot that one come up, that's why it actually works. So uh, there just a little bit about how the robot's bidding system actually works. They play two over one. If you've never played it before, it's a lot like standard. It just means that if you bid at the two level in response to a major, it's a game forcing hand. Keep the bidding at the one level if you're trying to bid a new suit um, or otherwise bid a no trump if you're not game forcing in those cases. Uh, raising partner, if you've got the three card support, um, if you're invitational, you go via a no trump and then you jump or bid three of a major the following turn. And if you're game forcing with three card support, uh, you go via a new suit and then support later. So that's how it's meant you're meant to raise partner. If you've never done that before, I just wanted to highlight that because you won't immediately see that when looking for the descriptions of how to do this. And then finally, you want to keep an eye out for Drew. And also in the bidding, just remember you can look up the bids, but don't feel like you really have to always match the description. Trust your instincts. Uh, follow them, just use this as a guide. Check that it is not drastically different to what you expect, but don't worry if you're a point out or a card out here, do what you think's right, because that's what Bridge is all about. So talking about the Robox leads, we'll try and see if they get on to, to lead here, but uh, what they actually do, it's important to understand their style of leads. They really, really like passive leads where they don't lead away from honors very often. It's important to understand this because you might just assume they're leading their fourth highest from their longest and strongest, whereas they actually, well, they may choose to lead that, but their preference will be to lead from sort of three low or four low rather than leading away from honors because leading away from honors is like a high risk, high reward situation. And when they work off double dummy analysis, they see that leading away from honors can give away a trick a lot of the time. So most of the time they will try and avoid that. If they are leading uh, their fourth best, they will lead their fourth highest card. Uh, so you can interpret their uh, leads as fourth bests, but understand that they do try and prefer passive leads. And sometimes this will cause uh, an issue when you lead something and you're making a more aggressive lead and your partner doesn't return it. It's because they assume that your lead style will be similar. So they're assuming lots of the times that uh, that you will be passive as well. So here I'll just open the spade and bid two spades. Okay, and they're on lead. All right, so here they've led Jack of Diamonds. This is almost certainly just like a singleton or doubleton diamond. Um, they do lead top of sequences. Here we've got the 10 of diamonds, so uh, that's not the case. Um, so we'll open up all the cards. So here, Jack, Dalton, Diamond. But if you look at their hand, they've got a very awkward lead problem. They don't want to lead away from uh, uh, their honors. So they thought that the Diamond was the most passive. So let's bring up another hand, see how they uh, choose in that situation as well. Okay, partner opened three clubs and the opponents are working their way to four spades. Wow, <laughs> that's an interesting hand. Anyway, uh, we'll see what my partner leads. Now you'd expect them to lead a top club, but if they don't actually have a sequence in clubs, they might choose something else. Again, they like try and passive leads. Here they lead the king. The robots do lead king from ace king. So uh, with ace king, they'll lead the ace from ace king doubleton otherwise they will lead the king so here again another sequence lead that they've got um, i was trying to show the passive leads that they like but uh here it's not coming up but you can see that they have ace king there and we'll have one more look at uh, the types of leads that they actually make and bring up a new hand wow <laughs> look at this hand uh this was just a random hand but uh that's a lot of black cards. Wow. 7-6. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I was going to try and highlight leads, but uh, I think there's a cool hand. I'll just uh, try and bid this one, see what I actually want to do. I, don't, I really don't know what I should be bidding here. Um, we'll, we'll start with... We'll start bidding spades, and uh, I'll come back in and bid clubs. We're vol against not. Partner volunteered for spades. It's important here, 
So as I mentioned, I wanted to like, you want to check that the description isn't really, really far from what you're doing. Use it as a guide. But here I've got four plus clubs, twice rebittable spades and 25 plus total points. So here, like the robots haven't seen this uh, description, like this auction before, because I've never seen uh, so many black cards. Um, but you usually want to check to see that the description is not way, way out because sometimes the robots might uh, double you. Um, but uh, we'll pass and partner doubled five diamonds, which is pretty likely. So here I can consider what do I want to do in this situation? Do I want to bid five spades? My partner didn't raise spades the first time. Is five diamonds going to make? We'll pass and we'll see what my partner actually chooses to lead. But this is actually a spot where you want to use the description as a guideline. But I wanted to highlight what sort of uh, things can happen if you just get really drastic bidding. Whenever you see something that in the description says this, I know my partner is always going to double it. So if I didn't want to be prepared for that, then I maybe shouldn't uh, have done that. Um, but it's a really good example hand. So we'll get in there. Um, and it's me on lead. And here, the other thing worthy of note is the robots Q bid first round controls. So here they've shown the ace of clubs, but it looks like East has a void club because I've got the ace of clubs. Um, so I won't actually lead my ace trying to give my partner a rough, but we'll just lead a spade. Okay. So uh, here's hoping my partner has some tricks here available. I reckon they might make slam, um, but we'll see. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look good here. So this is a really uh, important thing to try and understand if you want to avoid the doubles. This mistake can happen a lot. Um, so always be careful reading the descriptions, um, but here, I thought like, a 7-6, I'm just gonna get in and bid. Um, but we probably talked them out of uh, slam. So a nice striped-tailed uh, double. Let go of the club. I could have counted more. Ah, look at that. They were cold for 13. We talked them out of it. So here, they just got a quiet 750 when, you know, if I wasn't bidding as much, they might uh, have uh, bid uh, Grand Slam. So it, it didn't cost in the end, but uh, as you can see, uh, my partner's hand here, uh, they've got like not something close to a double, but they try and read into your descriptions. So I think there's a really cool hand. I wasn't planning on showing this, but I was like, wow, seven, six. That's awesome. Let's just show in this example here. Anyway, I was talking about leads. The robots generally prefer passive leads. So uh, if they have like one honor or they have three low, they'll tend to try and lead uh, their three low suit. So that's important to take into account. The other thing I wanted to touch on is the signals that the robots actually use. Uh, they play standard signals, so high encourage and uh, natural count. Um, so natural count is high, low is an even uh, card. Uh, supposedly they, on the opening lead of an ace king, um, they will give high encourage. Also, if they have the queen behind an ace king, they will also play high encourage. And when following suit, they tend to play standard count. With like my thoughts on the signals with robots, uh, they're, they're not the best signal as ever. Um, but I find this really liberating when trying to defend, because I reckon there's so much ability in trying to defend accurately, uh, just with all the information that isn't in signaling. Um, so it really helps your bridge game uh, if you don't focus too much on the signals. So while the robots do signal, I reckon it really helps you develop the other aspects of your defense uh, when you're not strongly focusing on signaling. Also, the robots won't pay attention to a suit preference signal that you play if you're giving them a rough. They just work off double dummy analysis, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Um, so uh, that's a little bit about signals. They do signal uh, high encourage and natural count, so you can rely on that if you need to. But I think it's really, really good to try and develop your other skills um, 
because they don't actually signal that much or that accurately. Try and work out what else you uh, know about the uh, hands. When discarding, they try and discard safely um, if they can't get a, a rough or if they've still got trumps, they'll try and discard from a short suit. So understanding how they try and discard is important rather than what signal they're trying to do. So all your focus isn't on signaling, but trying to develop uh, the other things. So quick recap of leads and signals. Leads, they do lead fourths, but they really like passive leads. From ace king, they will lead the king, uh, unless they've got ace king doubleton. With signals, they do do standard signals, but you don't need to rely too heavily on that. So the last thing I want to cover is capitalizing on mistakes that uh, the robots can make, um, how to prevent your partner from making them, or how to encourage the robot opponents to actually make them. So first of all, uh, this hand here is a perfect description of the mistakes that the robots can make. Sometimes the description of the bids will show really, really high total point counts, and then your partner will double it. If you are worried about that, maybe you shouldn't be making that bid. It might mean you have to make an imperfect choice there. So um, don't try and make a bid where the opponent, uh, your robot has a massive t total point count if you know that they're actually going to double it if that's what you're worried about. Um, other mistakes that they uh, make is sometimes they won't continue a suit that you lead. And this comes back to the assumption of they lead that you lead like they lead. They expect passive leads, so a lot of the time they might try and find a switch. So if you're playing in three no trumps and you don't have anything better to do and the opponents have found the killing lead, sometimes it's worth ducking just to see if they switch because they do switch at uh, unusual situations um, because they expect that the lead is very often um, a passive lead. So they switch more than you would expect human players to actually uh, switch suits from. Another common mistake that they make is they don't understand that you have a guess in a suit. They work off double dummy analysis. So they assume that they run simulations of where all the cards are and then what they think the most accurate one is, that's how they play it. So if there's a singleton king offside, uh, they'll expect that you know that it's a singleton king. So sometimes they'll just lead a singleton king. It's a really unusual lead, but then you're like, okay, it makes sense when they think that double dummy, it says the singleton king's not gonna get a trick because that's always gonna fall under the ace. They don't understand that sometimes you don't know that that singleton king will fall under the ace, so you'll take a finesse. So a way to manipulate this to get extra tricks is when you're declaring, uh, the robots will very often hop up with uh, ace if you've got like a king jack guess. They, they might hop up with honors if they assume that you'll always guess correctly. So when trying to make the guess, I then go, okay, so they haven't hopped up with an ace, so they don't have it. Like what you try and go through is sort of like a back and forth logic of, well, they don't know I have a guess. So if they have this, they'll usually hop up with that honor. So you'll spot them hop up with honors more often than not. Use this to help yourself guess contracts. So a couple of mistakes that the robots make is sometimes they won't continue suits, so your partner might switch um, when you, you lead a suit, or when the robots are playing, they lead something. If they've found the right lead, sometimes you just duck to hope that they switch suits because they assume that uh, you've led um, passively. Um, also, they don't know you've got a guess, so you'll sometimes see your partner lead singleton honors out. Um, like singleton kings because they think it's never gonna win a trick anyway because they don't understand that there is actually a guess. Uh, you can use this to your information of when you have a guess and you lead up, the robots will very often fly with honors. So when they don't, you might be able to help uh, guess more accurately in that spot. But uh, while that's mistakes the robots make, there's certain areas where they don't make mistakes that human players would make. So they don't miscount. Uh, so the mistakes that robots make uh, seem glaring, but there's lots of times they do things really, really well uh, and they never miscount, which um, you don't criticize your partner for making human errors for uh, miscounting. Um, and the robots are fantastic at not miscounting. So while the error rate of the robots is there, I don't think they're drastically bad at bridge because there's errors that humans make that they never make. 
So I, have, I find like it's a slightly different way to play the game, but it's important to understand what mistakes they do make and what mistakes they don't make and how to utilize that to improve your actual bridge scores. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to cover today of uh, playing with robots. So uh, I really enjoy playing with them. Give it a shot if you haven't. There's lots of cool tournaments that you can play. Um, today we talked about how they actually work with their double dummy analysis. Uh, common terms in the bidding, so understanding that bidding terminology, what you should look for in that. And then we looked over their biddings, which, bidding structure, which is two over one, their leads, which typically are passive, and their signals, which are standard signals. The mistakes that they make, they tend not to know that you've got a guess. They assume that they're leading passively, so they'll switch more. And finally, when looking at the descriptions, if you've got a really high total point count, you will see doubled contracts. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video on tips and tricks for playing with robots, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.